Hi family. We are living in a world that's causing a lot of stress and worry, many questions about the end times. People are worried about their food, their, their money, their health. Some are in fear. And as I said last weekend, that if we focus too much on all these negative things, we will allow fear to come in to the front door, into our house or into our hearts. And when that happens, fear will cause the faith to go out the back door. What we should be doing is allowing faith to come into our hearts through the front door of our home by hearing messages like this and reading our Bible, feeding our faith. And if we'll do that, fear will go out the back door. The great antidote and the only antidote to deal with the fears, the problems, the worries, the concerns of our present time is to feed on faith. Faith is the antidote. If we don't, and we focus our attention on our worries, our concerns, our fears, and the problems around us, fear will come in and Satan will be able to dominate us. And he will paralyze us will become unable to be productive. Like that little mouse in front of a snake. It just goes nowhere, it just sits and shivers. That's what the devil wants to do to us. The mouse can't even run away. No, he's not going to do that. The Word of God is clear. God is on our side and God is merciful. So many Christians through the years have said to me, Apostle Theo, I know God's a good God. I know He'll help us, but I don't know if He'll help me. I'm not sure He'll help me because I'm not perfect. And that's the cry of almost every believer in Jesus. The truth of the matter is, no one is perfect. All of us have faults and failings and make mistakes. The point though is this, God is merciful and loves us just the same. You might be doing your best. Maybe you think your best is not good enough, but God is merciful and if He helps one, he has to help all because that's who God is. And He certainly has helped many more than one. All right? So let's continue then for part two today. God tells us we can be strong with His strength, even though we don't deserve His help. This is called grace from a merciful God. Romans chapter 5 verse 2 says, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So notice that. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We stand, we overcome, we succeed by faith in a merciful God. There's no other way. How are we going to depend on God's mercy if we don't believe God is merciful? That's a good question. How can we trust in God's mercy, if we don't believe that God is merciful. 
The purpose of this message is to help us understand God's character and God's nature. That will help us trust Him. When we find out that He's merciful, it will help us to depend on Him. Let's see that in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So God said, come boldly to find grace and mercy to help you in your time of need. Come boldly for it. So if we don't come for it, we're not going to have it. If you want grace and mercy, you have to come for it. There are many out there in the world today who are not saved and have not received the grace or mercy of salvation because they didn't come for it, even though it's available. We save by faith through grace, but it doesn't come yet because they haven't come for it. Now, the problem is, though, none of us will ever come for grace and mercy if we don't believe God is merciful. So the objective here today is to help us believe that God is merciful. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 12. Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come fearlessly into God's presence, assured of His glad welcome. Praise God. So that I can come fearlessly into God's presence and be assured of a glad welcome. Say that. Once more, I can come fearlessly into God's presence and be assured of a glad welcome. If we would only see God as a merciful God and by His grace allow Him to help us, we will make great progress in this life. You see, so many believers are struggling in life like caught in quicksand or like a car spinning in the mud or like a mouse on that little treadmill that goes round and round and round, going nowhere, and they feel like, I'm hopeless. I'm never going to get out of this rat race. There's no hope for me, no future for me. So many believers feel like that. But if they will learn to depend on a God of mercy, all that will change. Look at Romans 5, 17. Those who receive, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So the key is we've got to receive this grace and we've got to receive the gift of God's right standing with himself that he gives us because we are believers in Jesus. And if we do that, we will reign in this life. God will see to it. The word reign means to live holy, to overcome life's problems, to achieve our goals, by depending on a merciful God. There's no other way. Let's go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Jeremiah, where God is warning Israel to turn back to Him, to forsake worshipping idols, which they have made with their own hands. Think about that. Here are the children of Israel who God brought out of Egypt through the Red Sea and gave them Canaan. Now they're worshipping idols which they made with their own hands. How dumb can you be and still breathe? Let's see what happens. Jeremiah 25 verse 4. Again and again the Lord has sent you his prophets 
but you have not listened or even tried to hear. Each time the message was this, turn from the evil road you are traveling and from the evil things you are doing. Only then will I let you live in this land of Canaan that the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever. Do not make me angry by worshipping the idols you have made. Then I will not harm you. Then I will not harm you. But you would not listen to me, says the Lord. You made me furious by worshipping your idols. Bring on yourselves all the disasters you now suffer. So God says, you worship the idols, and because of that, you brought on yourselves all of the problems you are now experiencing. As a result of their behavior, they were conquered by the Babylonians and taken to Babylon as slaves. Jeremiah 29 verse 1. Jeremiah wrote a letter from Jerusalem to the elders, priests, prophets, and all the people who had been exiled to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Now, think about this. They are in Babylon as slaves, taken there by the Babylonians. And God is about to say something in verse 5, which just absolutely amazes me. I think you're going to find this very interesting as well. All right, verse 5. God says to them, while they're living in Babylon as slaves, God says, build homes and plan to stay, plant gardens, and eat the food they produce. Plant gardens and eat the food that come from your gardens. Plan to stay. Build houses. Huh. Verse 6. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for the children, so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Do not dwindle away. Amazing. So God's telling them to (laughs) make a life for themselves in Babylon while they're there as captives. And then this is going to get even more strange, even more interesting. Verse 7. Then God says, And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile or where I allowed you to be captive because of what you did. So God says, I want you to work for the prosperity of the city of Babylon. Amazing. Work to prosper this city that's taken you captive into slavery. Then he says, that's not all. He says, pray to the Lord for the city, for its welfare will determine your welfare. Hmm. He says, if the city succeeds, you will succeed. Pray that the city succeeds. Why? So you can succeed. There's a great lesson there. We need to pray that South Africa succeeds as a nation. We need to pray that America succeeds as a nation. We need to pray whatever country you're living in, wherever you may watch this broadcast, you need to pray for your country to succeed. That's what God instructs us to do. If they can do that as slaves in their country, in that country, then surely we can do that as citizens of our countries. Amen. 
Now, clearly God still wants to bless the children of Israel after all the evil they have done. So here they've turned away from God. They're worshiping idols. They made with their own hands, blocks of wood, blocks of iron that they cut out of a lump of wood <laughs> or a clay and they worship it. This is my God. I mean, how dumb can you be and still breathe? This is my God. And so because of that, God allowed them to be taking their slaves to Babylon. And you can see God's merciful, loving heart wanting to bless the children of Israel after even all, after all they've done. Even after all of that, he still wants to bless them. While they're slaves. Amazing. Verse 8 says, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams, because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. But then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. And I'll bring you home again. All right, how merciful is God? Now look at verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. That amazes me. Yeah, there are slaves in Babylon. And God says, I have plans for you to give you a future, a good future, a great future, and a future full of hope to do you good. He's telling them that while they are slaves in Babylon. So before we talk about this portion of Scripture, which we've just read, the children of Israel are in Babylon as slaves, Let's find out a little more about Babylon, okay? Let's go to Revelation 17 and verse 5. The Word of God says, A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. Babylon was the source of all idolatry. The children of Israel were slaves in Babylon and God instructs them to infiltrate the society of Babylon without forgetting who they were. God told them they would be delivered after 70 years. What amazes me in this historical account is how merciful God is. The children of Israel were living evil lives. They were now receiving the harvest of what they had sown. They were receiving the harvest of what they had sown. And I'm sure they asked God to forgive them. I'm sure they came to their senses. I'm sure they repented for their sinful ways while they were slaves in Babylon. And then God says to him, this is what I plan for you. This is what I want to do for you. Even now, while you are in Babylon, this is what I want to do for you. Even now. Let's read that again. Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. God's telling this to slaves in Babylon. Plans of good, to do you good, to give you a future. A future of great hope. No doubt God is merciful. Have we proved this point? Have we proved that God is merciful right now. If God was prepared to do that for His servants, 
the Israelites, then at least he is prepared to do at least the same for us, his children in the new covenant. Those people of Israel, the children of Israel were not born again at that time. They were servants of God, but you are his child. Yes, all the Israelites today who have accepted Christ as their savior are all born in the family of God. And we love Israel. We love the Israelites. Because of them, we have the fathers and we have Jesus Christ and we have the Old Testament and even the New Testament it was all written by Jews. But they weren't born again until after Jesus died and rose. The point I'm making is God was so willing to show so much compassion and mercy for servants of His, should He not do at least the same for us His children today? Show us the same kind of mercy, I'm saying. So I'm going to recommend that we read and meditate on this scripture, Roman, uh, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, that we meditate on it and read it every day and tell ourselves that God wants to bless me. He has a great future for me and it's full of hope and blessing. We should claim this verse every day. Read it, think about it, meditate on it and thank God that He is merciful, and that He is our strength and ability, that He will bless us and help us and, and encourage us and provide for us because He is merciful. Not because we are perfect, but because He is merciful. Whatever you are going through right now, whatever challenges you are facing right now, you might feel like you are in Babylon. You might feel like you have no future. But God has a great plan for your life, as you've seen today. It's a good plan. It's a plan with a great future and a plan of hope. So many people are without hope in this world, family. But God has a plan for you that's full with hope. Let's say this together. I believe God is merciful. From today, I depend on Him to bring His plans of blessing to pass in my life. Again, I depend on God to bring His plans of blessing to pass in my life. I will give Him all the glory. Let's say this together. Even though I am not a perfect Christian, even though I am not highly educated, God's ability is more than enough to put me over in this life. Again, God's ability is more than enough to put me over in this life. And He will, just because He is merciful. Just because He is merciful. Praise His wonderful name. Well, family, we love you very much. Pastor Bev and I are praying for you continually. Would you kindly close your eyes? For those of you who are listening and don't know Jesus and you're not sure about going to heaven, if you want to be sure and you want to know Jesus, say this little prayer with me from your heart. Dear God in heaven, please forgive me for my sins. Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save my life. I surrender to you. 
I declare you are my Saviour. And from today, you are the Lord of my life. And I will love you with all my heart until I see you on that wonderful day in heaven. Praise God. If you said that prayer and you meant it from your heart, God has accepted you as his child. And we will see you in glory. Jesus loves you and we love you. God bless you all.